Hey everybody, this is Richie from the Metal Cell Podcast. First of all, I want to give a shout out to our main sponsors, Rising Suns, the award-winning brewery in Cork. I'm delighted to welcome Rope Maker. I've Dave and Rory in with me. How are we, lads? How are we going? Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us. us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah, and I have my co-host Danielle, and we're going to grill the lads, aren't we, Danielle? Absolutely. It'll be sweating by the end of this one. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so listen, first of all, congratulations on the album, Dave. Interwoven is out now, probably, what, a week nearly, is since it? Fri- no, since Friday, we've we've released uh, two singles starting back in early January. We had one single and then we had another one um, just in the third week of February there. And then we dropped the album just last Friday on the 24th. So, wow. yeah, it's been... It's been interesting. It's been, you know, it's been nice just to get it out there because, like, I've actually been sitting on the album since September. Like, I got it um, reamped and mixed there in Tracks Mix with uh, Michael Richards there in September. So, you know, it's kind of been, we've been waiting just to get it out there. Yeah. So, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to finally just you know, move on and put it out there and let whoever wants to listen to it, listen to it, you know? Yeah, we, we reviewed it um, on the forums, but that's that episode is out um, okay. this Friday. Confusing now with all the, the, the way this pre-recorded stuff is. like. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. But Daniel spotted G um, a few weeks back, didn't you, Daniel? Yeah, I spotted, um, I don't know how I came across it. I think it was might have been on like Metal Archives or something like that. Um, yeah, no, and- they, did a, they, they did a feature on the stair um, couple of, uh, probably after, after the first single dropped, yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, was, that was the only thing that was available at the time before for Bones. Yeah. And I, I, I was listening to it in the car with himself. I just threw it on. I was like, I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put this into the, the weekly playlist. And I thought, oh, this is really, really good. I was like, I fucking love the name Rope Maker. It's a class name. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, we were really impressed. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it was it, for, and I was like, that's all they have up. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's their first single is class. Yeah. So, so yeah. why did you pick that name? Dave? Rope Maker. Maker. Um, it, I, again, I picked the name years and years ago. I was just, I was reading a book. Uh, it was actually called, I still remember the book. It was called In the Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbrick. And it was just, he was talking about, it's again, it's nothing to do particularly with, you know, it was just a, a word I liked, like a rope maker was a person who, you know, was part of Nantucket society and it was an important job. And yeah, I just thought it was a really strong name. It just, yeah. you know, it just kind of jumped out of me on the page. I was like, that's, I really like that word, you know, and it's it's kind of ambiguous and, you know, it doesn't, it, it can mean anything to anyone really, you know, so I've always, I've always stuck with it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. the first, we'll say, sign of Rome Maker comes up on Facebook in 2013. Yeah, so like, I've been, like, I'm from Port Arlington and Leash. I've been living in Galway since 2004, but basically, Rope Maker was a band that I had with uh, one or two of my mates back in Port Arlington. And it was like, compared to now, it was a completely different band. Okay. We were more kind of what you would call sort of math rock, post rock, you know, like big influences would have been like the Redneck Manifesto, bands oh, like Light, you know, it was a lot cleaner. Like I've always, I've always been a huge metalhead, you know, since I was a kid, you know, Pantera Vulgar Display of Power was, you know, one of my gateway drugs, so to speak, in the metal world, like millions of other people. But, you know, it's just, again, bands and music, it's, you know, it's not just one person, it's the other people you play with. And, um, you know, the other guys I played with, we were all kind of fans of that sort of music, the more post-rock, math-rock kind of thing. And, you know, that's... Are you a singer back then, Dave? No, no, it was always instrumental. You know, I again, I always had a grow for instrumental stuff. You know, um, I remember seeing... Like I was over in the States in the early 2000s and I saw Pelican. They just released their first EP. I saw them in Detroit in the the Magic Stick. (laughs) And I just, I I didn't know anything about this band. And I was like, you know, I just remember reading a a magazine and saying, oh, they're playing in the Magic Stick. So 
I went there and I was just I was just blown away. I was just really intrigued. I was just blown away by their sound and their vibe, you know. But again, going back to Port Arlington in the early days of Rope Maker, it was all sort of you know, it was just more clean guitar tones, more sort of catchy stuff. And again, like say for example, my drummer Alan at the time, you know, he's not a metal drummer. He never was. He's you know, he's more he's a rock drummer. Mm. So you can't you know, you're you can't even though I always had the love of metal. You know, I couldn't really sort of, it was like putting a square peg into a round hole. I couldn't get Alan to be like, you know, he just wasn't interested. And that's fair enough. That's cool. It's yeah. like you always hear Stephen Carpenter talking about wanting to get Abe Cunningham to play more like Meshuggah. And Abe's just like, <laughs> piss off. I don't want to do it. It's not who I yeah. am. And you have to respect that. Yeah. So that's kind of the earlier days of Roadmaker. We played a couple of gigs. We played a gig down in Cork a few that's years right. ago with Ter- with Terriers, um, we did a few gigs at Dublin, but you know, we're we're hardly pl- prolific, uh, prolific yeah. you know. But you got out an EP, didn't you, as well with Aidan Cunningham? We couple, yeah, we did an EP with Aidan Cunningham there in 2016 called Glean, and before that, we did an EP based out of Westland Studios with an engineer called John Kelly. He, I don't know if you ever remember a band called Refraction, um. They're at Dublin. They played support with uh, Alter of Plagues there on Alter of Plagues last gig in Dublin. Oh. And he was the engineer for that, John Kelly. And yeah, so we've two, we've actually three EPs uh, prior to this. So like, I've actually been going at this, at, you know, making music with Rope Maker since 2010, really oh. and truly, you know. Oh. So yeah. You when know. did they come into your sphere of influence, Rory? Uh, well, I met Dave in Galway through, I think we met at an Alenkis show. Yes, I, the yeah. first time we met you properly was, um, it was when you were supporting, was a 7.5 tons of beer. Yeah, Jesus, from, from up north. Mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's probably going back to like 2015, maybe yes. 2016. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I remember we, we did that show, I think in the Roisin. Uh, no, no, it was in, it was actually in that, uh, in your I was in the warehouse. Room. Yeah, yeah, the warehouse. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that was a great, great show. That was super fun. Yeah, they're so you did hefty. A death I love that. You did, band. A death t- you did a death tones cover that night as well. Actually, oh, shit. yeah, we played shop yeah. it and I put blast beats into it. Yeah, <laughs> you do, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. But uh, I think we met. We were like, I remember I was living on the other side of town. I think we had a bit of a get together back there afterwards and chatted to Dave about that night. Um. And then you kind of got in touch with me. I don't think we, we. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think because I I would have known your brother Josh just through you know he was working in one or two pubs in town and yeah. like you know I go up and have a drink and he'd always have cool music playing and he was a super nice guy and you know I I think you were abroad at the time and then you were coming back and I just kind of mentioned I says oh is your brother up Danison or. You know, I just said, would it be cool if I give him a shout or whatever, you know? And, you know, would he be interested in doing some session work? And I think that's pretty much how we got the ball rolling. And that was yeah. like 20, we, er, late, early, that was late, late 2018, early 2019, I think. I wow. looked uh, it up earlier through uh, on my hard drive to see when I did that first <laughs> demo for you. Uh, and it was like, that's March 2019. But like yeah. we met a couple of times, I think a couple gig or two. And yeah, like because like about God music, God yeah, always a small base. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. Really and then people, you yeah. just got in touch with me out of the blue, asked me if I would be interested, uh, and yeah. I was like, yeah, absolutely. If um, I'm up for it, because I was just kind of getting going with trying to build up my own studio and start uh, to do a bit more session work. And yeah, to be fair when Dave started sending me stuff, it was some of it was like really more post rocky. But yeah, then, like my old, basically like yeah. my old stuff, you okay. know? Yeah, and then it kind of started to transition more in towards like more metal sounding. Yeah, um, like what, what kind of happened there, sorry to cut across you, was that like we did, I re- like I was thinking about it and I was saying this to one or two other people is that I, um, we did about six demos and I just, you know, I was... Nothing was really clicking with me. I was like, this just, you know, it was all fine. But, you know, I just, you know, I was kind of gotten to a stage where I was like, do I even want to continue 
doing this. <laughs> you were you ready know? to pack it in at one stage. Man. Yeah, yeah, I texted you. <laughs> remember, yeah. I'd, I'd email, yeah. or I'd written you on Facebook. I was just like, man, you know, it's nothing to do with you, but I'm just, I'm seriously just not feeling it at the moment. And then with a bit of time went by, and then I just wrote this riff, the first riff off of the last song, Learning Through Distortion. Okay. And I was just like, you know, I was kind of just interested myself. I was like, that's, you know, I really like the riff. Like, I've been kind of trying to learn Meshuggah Bleed on the guitar. And, you know, if you listen to that riff, there's a, it's not the same, but there's a kind of a technique that he uses in, in the way he picks, the, he's, he's playing the picking pattern that is, you know, it's it's definitely owes a debt to it. And I sent it on to Rory and he was like, yeah, sounds cool. You know, and then I just wrote a song based on it. And when I got the demo back to that, I was like, no, that's something. You know, yeah. I was like, I, I was really, again, it's all subjective, it's all personal, but I was just like, it lit a fire under me. I was like, fuck, this is, this is what I want to do. You know, because going back to what I said, I was always a huge, I, huge metalhead my whole life. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I'm working with, you know, I have this opportunity to work with Rory. He's a fucking awesome drummer. He can play pretty much anything. Therefore, I can do whatever I want to do. Thank you. you know, sure about that, but... We have a thing in the forums, don't we, Danielle, about um, solo artists and their use of drum machines. I think Evan has a thing. Well, <laughs> he's converted us to it now at this stage. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can hear it now. So, yeah, it's great to bring in a, a real life fle- drummer in the flesh. Uh, it to, does, so it does, doesn't, I, like, I mean, you get a lot of guys and their demo, like, Drum machines have come a hell of a long way, you know, they really have, but it's just, it's so obvious, I think, to the trained ear or what. It's like a drum, a drum machine, like, you know, your superior drummers or whatever you want to, you know, um, what's the big one to have? It is, yeah, it's easy drummer and superior drummer, like, especially the rolls, the rolls and the fills, they just never sound. You know, they're kind of something that's pre-made. It's not something that's, um, you know, tailor-made to your music. You know, you're kind of playing after the fact, you know, whereas a drummer should be, you know, linking in, obviously, with, with what you're doing to the best of their ability. You I know, think they're um, really useful tools as yeah, a drummer. Yeah, they're great, like those co- they're great yeah, for demos. Yeah. Exactly. They're like, re- like, I've demoed so much stuff by programming and uh, just to get my ideas down if I can't get on the kit, they're super, super handy. But when it comes to actually like making the art, it's just, for me, it never compares like electronic drums and program drums work for lots of different styles of music, but uh, for what really excites me in like heavy music and organic music, it's just not going to be the same. Like I I noticed you guys, when you did your episode with Sam on Apogee and Tide, (laughs) uh, you were taught, I did all the programming for his songs. And, uh, um, and, um, I wish I could have recorded them, but we just don't have, didn't have the time. And I and I remember Evan saying that he like he's uh, I can't remember what he said exactly, but like I share the same gripes <laughs> with uh, program drums that most of us do. Yeah. So you'll be happy to know I'm uh, me and Sam are working on a new record and we've uh, a bunch of tracks uh, written already. So um, that's fantastic. They'll all yeah. be recorded for real. So great stuff. Oh, I'm very excited about that. So there's the connection there. I want to explore that. Uh, Dave, obviously with Rory playing drums for you. Um, the artwork is as well. It, have you shared the same artist by any chance with Apogee and well, Tide and your no, artwork? I used, um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I used um, the AI uh, oh, It's back again. App. It's coming up again. <laughs> yeah, again, it's for, for just... The, yeah, for the, mid, for mid, both mid, things, is it, Dave? For the actual... Yeah, for, Wow, holy shit. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, man, it's... And this is like, I was thinking about, I was out for a walk the other day, and again, just as mad what goes through your head, but I was kind of thinking about the whole drum machine thing, and I was kind of thinking, what happens when AI, act, you know, when you meld the drum libraries that you have at the minute, but you're actually, in a couple of years' time, you have more of a integrated AI system, you know, working with drum, you know, working as you know, in, in tandem with, say, what Toon Track are doing, if they start introducing more of an AI sort of concept into their... Um, like, I think that's going to be interesting. I don't know. But anyway, going back, 
the um, yeah, I used AI for all the art, and it, I can't, you know, it was. I'm pretty, impre- I'm pretty impressed with, with, with what came out, you know. Okay, so who did the artwork, Rory? You might be able to help me for Sam's. Um... Sam put most of that together on himself, I think. Yeah, but um, did he not use an artist that, that you James, used as well? Elel- 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 he Elel- used Elel- James for one of them. James Sheridan. Oh, if I'm, if yeah, I'm, yeah. He did. Yeah, James Sheridan. He's the same artist we've used for years, but yes. I can't remember. He's great. Yeah, oh, he's amazing. He's yeah. he's a great guy as well. So but, I thought uh, James Sheridan did yes. the artwork for Pian for you, no. Dave. No, no, unfortunately not, no. Um yeah, no, it was it was all it was all computer based to my shame. You know. <laughs> well, look, you're you're saving money, like I mean, but we're all for the it, artists on this show. I'm sorry, but I know yeah, why. I, can understand. Look, I completely agree. I absolutely agree with you. You know, it's Can't just hear what we said about drum machines, Dave. Come on. <laughs> 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 He's walking oh, yeah. the dog, Rory, and feeling this insane <laughs> guilt over fucking <laughs> <laughs> the art and the drums. You know, apparently, you know. apparently, you were the last call. You know, that's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't. I was, Fair no, enough. Any amount of uh, I, you won't believe the hours I put into programming the drums, and it just wouldn't work. I had to go back to your Rory. <laughs> <laughs> no, tis, tis, um like even last year alone, solo artists bringing stuff out has been incredible, and it's a great start yeah. to this year as well, Dave, with your introduction to the scene Thank as you. a solo artist. That. You know, um, like we'll say, we might just maybe start with um, the album itself. Uh, like, how how long was it a work in pro- progress? I mean, a lot of it those was, songs when were they wrote initially? It was that was written. That was all written after. I say mid twenty nineteen. Um, yeah. So you know, it was in a, I would like. I mean, I'm working full time. You know, so I wouldn't say it was a compressed. You know, I was always tipping away. Like you get home from work, you get home from the gym, you get a bit of food, and you just go up to you know, you go up to my sort of attic here, and you know, you just sit down and you just keep working away at riffs. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're just kind of wait you're hoping not hoping but you're just playing around just like anybody that's writing a song just hoping to hear something that kind of intrigues you or sort of perks your ear up and you're like you know i can work with that and you're just you know it's editing and you're just editing and assembling stuff and you know like generally uh, the workflow for me was about once every six weeks or thereabouts you know i'd have another song ready to send on to rory give or take you know, so like I was fairly consistent, you know, with, um, you know, I wasn't killing myself, you know, but I don't believe in in over in overwork either when it comes to me writing music. You know, it has to be something kind of relatively natural. And I think if you're overworking yourself, you kind of lose, you know, you, you can kind of lose perspective, you know, on what you're doing. So we got um, into a bit of a flow there at one well, stage in particular, working on some of the tracks consecutively, like Dave would send me a demo and I was really busy at the time. A lot of it was worked on during lockdown and okay. the second yeah. lockdown. Um, so I was like kind of almost like four or five days in the studio every week and uh, working on various different things. And uh, Dave would send me a track and then when I got round to putting putting down all my ideas on it, I'd send it back and then, you know, typically we'd like meet up online like this and I just open my project and share it with him. Um, and we go through li- different bits that um, Dave might want to change, or any ideas that that he yeah. he might had. He was re- it was really great for me as well. Like when I was working on the songs, I would like ideas would just come into my head, and I he Dave was really open to me sharing them with him. Mm. Um, but um, and have you a was, kit set up in your own studio, Rory, to to practice what Dave was sending you, or what way were you approaching well, him? Yeah, so I have a, my studio is about twenty minutes from where I live, so. What a studio is to give it a shout out there, man. Oh, it's, I doesn't have a name. It's just my own home studio, yeah, really. Um, you have to come up with a name for it, man. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just launched my new website like yesterday, Good. actually, which is just Rory Guy at Drums dot com okay. um, for like uh, trying to do as more session work. But um, it's just set up in. I'm, I've got a bit of an unusual setup. It's like a this giant big like thirty foot across circular building. Uh, so it's huge. And then it's got another kind of section off the side of it, which is another circular room, which is about 
I don't know, 10 foot across. So I, I usually do a record in a smaller room, but like if I want to do some tribal <laughs> way too much reverb sounds, I'll go in the big room or even just open the door a little bit and let the room mics pick it up. But uh, mm. um, so that's permanently set up uh, about 20 minutes from where I live. And um, so I do all my work from there and any any projects that I'm working on, I just go there and, and do it. But um, it was a really, really fun process with Dave. Like we didn't... Um, especially through through lockdown like we didn't have any major pressures on us he yeah. was really no, understanding there's, there's never any there's, pressure yeah. there's never any pressure anyway like you know yeah a whole lot anyway <laughs> i i had a lot on my plate at the time a lot of different th- uh, projects to work on and uh dave was really patient with me and um help let me get back to him as soon as i could um and it was just a really really fun process he was um really open-minded um way of yeah, writing like songs the- like, to be honest with you, like, you know, and I said this, at the, you know, before I think we'd even really done anything, even concrete in the demos, you know, I remember meeting you in Galway just around town and we were just walking around for a bit and I was just saying like, look, man, I just want you to do, you know, do whatever you want. You know, I just want you to kind of just literally go nuts, you know, because it's, inst- you know, because it's instrumental as well. You know, there's a lot more freedom for yeah. the drummer. I wanted more, as much freedom as possible for the drummer just to express himself and just to paint whatever sort of vision he had for whatever sort of tune, you know, because it's, you know, you, there is that extra space there because you're lacking a vocalist, you know. So, you know, I, I just thought it was a good vehicle in one sense for Rory just to be able to, you know, really fucking demonstrate his talent, you yeah. know. Um yeah. I, you that know, was really. I, um, I was just going to say that, but the way you put it there, that in the moment when we were working on it, I could feel that like attitude from you, and you voiced it to me. But that made me feel like you really trusted me. Yeah, well, of so course. That made yeah. it so much easier to work on. Um, yeah, uh, like, like work playing for anyone. It's like if you've got that trust, it just yeah. it's a game changer. It is, yeah, yeah. It's um, a game changer. And like. Uh, and Dave, you, you, that trust was built over watching Rory's band play over the years and meeting him Absolutely, as a person as well. Absolutely, because I, I, I knew who I was. I knew who I was getting on board. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like Rory, just like they're all great musicians and they re- were very talented guys. And you know, Rory, just you know, again, anybody that's seen him live would always just be like, "Wow, he's amazing!" Do you know, and it just. You know, he just has has a talent and, you know, it's very apparent. And I was I just felt really, really lucky to have the opportunity to kind of get him on board and, you know, just uh, contribute to my own project. You know, so I was just I was just delighted. And like whenever I got a demo back, I was like when I write a demo, I'm just using a very I'm using a very bare sort of drum sound, you know, just like really, really stripped back. And so when I get the demo back, it's 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 just a whole different song. It always takes me like a week or two just listening back to it to actually sort of get my head around it and actually sort of acclimatize to it. But, you know, whenever, um, you know, we get to the stage of actually sitting down and having a chat about, you know, moving forward, like I would always say for every song we, we've done so far, like Rory's always been like 90 95 percent there it's the only money. ever m- minor sort of yeah. you know or oh, that section there might need a little bit of something different or you know but it's you know it's 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 fairly smooth say it's all so far it's been very smooth sailing you know right. so i picked out three songs from the album okay um cool i leave rory try and guess one of them anyway no pressure. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I know them all by different names to the oh, way they were released by. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Rory's yeah. just like, oh, that's a that's a recto number twelve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that bit with the fill or whatever. Like, okay, yeah. Dave, one, try and pick out the three songs that I would have went for. Mm. Oh, try and pick it out. Oh, yeah. Jesus, I. Uh, um, I'll bring up the song names now. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's okay. Um, I would say Blue Fire for Bones is one. Yeah, I don't know correct. why. Correct. I would say, I'd say the second single, Pain, Pain is another one. So um, I reviewed <laughs> that, but so I didn't put it on. Okay, fair enough, right. I'd say Gargantua. All right, no. 
no. And Great I'll sound. go for Great Submerged. Yeah, the Great I would have, I would have no. picked that one. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah. So I, went, I mean, I'm just saying names. I don't even know which songs they are. <laughs> I went with uh, Portable Thanks, Abyss. <laughs> Portable went, Abyss. Yeah, love that track. And Learning yeah, Through Distortion. distortion. Yeah, that was... Yeah. So Learning this Through Distortion was the first one I wrote. And that was in a kind of a different tune. And it was in C sharp, drop C sharp. And it's a lit, it's not as down tuned as the rest whereas the other ones all use what I call the mastodon or neurosis yeah. tuning you know the A sharp drop down and like so learning or portable abyss was the first song I wrote in that new tuning and again it was like another little sort of psychological musical milestone for me because it was it was almost like a different sort of style and vibe I, I was playing around with and yeah, I kind of picked when up I got on the, that. Yeah. When I got the demo back from Rory, I was just like, oh, this is just magic, you know? Okay, so I'm going, to play, I'm going to play Blue Fire for Bones. And it was so hard again. I can only pick a minute roughly out of each track. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, you can see where I jumped in for this anyway. Yeah, sometimes you don't need vocals to extend this absolute fury and emotion yep. that's created through your guitar work. Daniel, what would you think? Yeah, and sometimes you don't need vocals as well to have a catchy song, like, you know, like, mm. like the, you know what I mean? Like, loving, the, loving the compliments here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I was going on going for ages after listening to that track. Like, that's uh, awesome. Really yeah. appreciate that. No, it's um, just your command of the riff, uh, yeah. Dave. It's, it's it's really impressive. Like, I mean, thank you, thank you. Like, yeah. God knows, I've been listening to metal since like it was since back in 1981, and I'm actually going to see Saxon, the band that got me into the whole lot uh, wow. this, this <laughs> Friday. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's that's something that struck me right through listening to the whole album is your mastery of the riff and just the the breathing room you leave in between tracks um, for to explore. And a lot of it is exploring, I think, in, in, in a way, in the way you write the songs as well. I just throw it over to Rory there. Would you agree with that definitely. with Dave? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like, Dave is a far better guitar player than he gives himself credit, I think. Okay. Um, like, Thank and- you. I felt I felt like, especially because we started off in the more, more post rock sounds in the beginning. <laughs> as it went more metally, he demonstrated like not just from a technical point of view, but from like a vibe point of view. Yeah. The song has started to have this different kind of vibe, this like darker uh, thing, which I'm I really like that. And um, there was just I think he focused so much more and honed in on the atmosphere of what he was trying to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like re- re- I was reading uh, the words, you put, some of the words you put together about it, Dave, and uh, how you were saying that you you really wanted to make music like this for a long time. Yeah, and uh, it's really nice to like see that happen eventually. But it, there was this development with you, with your playing in terms of style. The technique was always there, but like you started to show me new things that I didn't know you had in your locker, which was really cool, and that inspired me to like. Try, try something else as well but yeah it was, yeah, it was yeah i think there was a nice yeah i think you know there's there's for whatever reason i just you know there's a good in, i think there's a great interplay between 
our abilities and I think they're nicely matched, you know, and you know, the proof's in the pudding, the proof's in in in, in what you what you can hear on the record, you know, and like it's 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 very hard as as a music writer to listen back to your own stuff because you know I'm always very hypercritical of what I do and you know you, you kind of put it under too much analysis sometimes but like still at the moment and I was saying this to Rory a while ago I'm still really happy with with the the you know with our with our work on this and I couldn't be you know for the moment I couldn't be happier you know and it's it's just really it's so nice to hear some good words about it like I really appreciate that from all of you um, I think it's funny like we, Dave and I have never played music in the same room together. Ever. No, that's, <laughs> I was going to bring this up as well. Yeah, like, so, not yet, hopefully. It, yeah, and the other funny thing from my point of view was that, like, we did all the songs. I did all of my drum tracks, but there was no lead guitar parts. None of that stuff was on the tracks when I when I worked on them. So, yeah, um, ah. just from a guitar point of view, when I got the the final tracks uh, back from Dave a few months ago. It was just like the songs were transformed and like we talked about different ideas that he had and i think i i I like piped up a couple of times like oh maybe you could try this here and uh but he just like really went for it on that so i was like in anticipation waiting for what he was going to put on on the guitar on the extra guitar layers and it really really makes makes some of the sections absolutely you see but that's you know for the lead guitars you really in my the way I work, I really have to have the drums there finalized and present, you know, because it's all rhythmical. It's all yes. the interplay between yeah. the riff, and the bass, and the lead guitar, and how that locks in with the drums. And the drums just add a, you know, it's it's like another kind of method of suggestion almost. It's just kind of suggesting other sort of avenues that you can go down that you could never. If I was again just using my sort of strip back drum um template like i'd never it just wouldn't be the same you know it's 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 you know it's it's chemistry i suppose you know it just kind of the drums just give um yeah well (laughs) you know but sometimes like i've had this thing over the years you know and i've come to the conclusion that you know sometimes when you're actually working on your computer and you have everything kind of turned down sort of low you're not you know, in a room with somebody hammering the drums, you're playing through a hundred watt head, you know, on a four by twelve cab because you know that can sometimes distort your impression of what you're actually doing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think okay. when you have the ability just to kind of okay, I have everything on my computer, you know, it's kind of everything's turned down really low. I can just sort of, you know, I can just concentrate very, you know, very precisely on what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah, I think that's you know? where the crafting comes into it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's not, it's, it's, you know, a lot of time and sort of just listening back was done over the last two years, you know, so where, you know, you're just trying to be as, you know, as satisfied as possible with, with, with what I'm, with what you're doing, you know, mm. um, so it it was a new it it was a new way of working for me and you know it was it really opened up um it really opened up new possibilities I think yeah and um, Rory you know we'll say getting stuff off Sam as well I, I just want to maybe draw another comparison in relation to where he writes um would you say that's is is it a similar thing with Sam do you think I know, very spe- I know you're speaking for him now, but like just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam, with Sam, there is, he kind of comes to me with a bit more of a finished product. Like Dave's right. songs were like pretty finished as well, but Sam's got vocals. He's got lots of layering and stuff going on, and he's got a very clear idea. He'll throw program drums on everything. Mm-hmm. I think with Dave, some of the thing, some of the stuff he sent me, there was, and some of there wasn't. I think well, I maybe don't think one. There was, of, any, there was no drums yeah. at all. No, no, you're no, right. There was. Called- yeah, I, I'm only remembering one beat that we did demo we oh, did yes. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just <laughs> yeah. sent the T on the phone. I just like recorded yeah. it on my phone and sent the yes. T on a WhatsApp you message. You programmed the kick pattern, and we're like, I want you well, to I learn didn't that. Even, so that I was did just it. off of um, that was just off a of logic. That was just the drum yeah, machine yeah. and logic. And you were like, I, I that took ages. To, I, that was a for heliotrope. That took you ages to. Uh, you were saying I really that had was to put a tricky pattern, man. Yeah, yeah like to yeah. keep the groove going with the snare and, and the cymbal, like and do the changing kick kick pattern and have the feel yeah. there. It, yeah, it took a while to work on it. That, but I love that shit. Like, 
yeah. like having that <laughs> process of like putting my head down and like working on figuring out something and achieving getting yeah. that that's one of my favorite <laughs> things about drumming because yeah. i'm yeah. a big nerd for it but um but going back to what you were saying about Sam and uh, and Dave, it's like it's a very similar process. So I'll get like, or with any of the people I've been work, working with, um, they'll send me a song. They'll give me as much or as little of a brief really as they want. I don't mm -hmm. really mind. I'm I'm happy to, like with Dave, for example, he pretty much just gave me free reign to do whatever yeah. I want. And that's where the trust was that I mentioned earlier. Um, with Sam, he's got a bit more clear ideas in mind. Um, but he's also so used to playing with me for yes. like the last 15 years yeah. uh, or more that he kind of anticipates, I think, what I might do. <laughs> but one of the really fun things about working remotely with people, especially with drum drums and like particularly with, I think, with like more progressive music um, is that somebody might s send me something and they might have an idea about like where the one is going to be and where the pulls and the hooks and the kicks are. And then I interpret it in my own way, unless they've given me a very yeah. specific guide. Okay. Um, and then you send it back, and the, sometimes their first reaction is like, what the fuck, man? Why is there a symbol there? <laughs> like, why is there a fiddle on the beginning of the bar? And uh, and sometimes, you know, maybe they're right, or sometimes we end up going with what, what I thought was, was better. And that's kind of the fun of it, you know? Yeah. Recently with Sam... Uh, he sent me a, i've been doing a lot of demoing for him at the moment recently and uh i just edited bits out of the sections <laughs> uh, because i'm having a bit more of a co-production role i guess with that mm. um he's writing all the stuff but like uh we're we're so close that i don't think he minds but <laughs> sometimes it really throws you off i've had it with myself working with other people you're like you work so hard on one thing and you can only see it in one way yeah and then you give it to somebody else and uh and they change it and you're just like what the fuck this isn't <laughs> right anymore you know <laughs> but you got to get out your own bias you know yeah and of course yeah. daniel as well um is an ex-drummer so i mean Pass. um what about uh dave's strengths daniel as a songwriter yeah what? like i mean i actually I'm kind of going to turn this into a question here but when I was like listening to the songs I was trying to kind of think Dave like when you were writing them are you like telling a story like do you have when you come up with the, the names of songs and that in the kind of songwriting that was kind of something that I was wondering yeah the, so the song titles is always the last absolutely the last thing it's always something even though it's one word or three words. It's something I kind of agonize over. And I'm just like, what? You know, because it's, um, you know, for me writing music, it's, I'm, I'm, I, I think it's subconscious or something. I'm not like, tell, you know, I'm not sitting down with any of the songs kind of going. I just work on riffs that I really enjoy. And I enjoy the challenge of trying to sort of assemble these kind of, you know, a song with 10 or 12 riffs and somehow try to make it work from point A to point B, you know, five minutes later and mm -hmm. try and make that as interesting to me and hopefully the listener, you know. So, again, when it gets to the end, when you've recorded it all, you've have it mixed and mastered and then you're listening back, you're like, what the hell do I call this? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck do I call this? Do you know, it's like... So, you know, it's probably a big letdown from somebody asking you a question, oh, why do you call your song this? It's like, the short answer is I don't fucking know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to play it's just... Portable Abyss, which I thought was a great title anyway. So we'll have the... Yeah, listen again, to you can listen to the music and you kind of go, yeah, it's sort of, Bits you of... know. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Okay, here we go.
couldn't hear any of that, Richie, by the way. That's yeah, you couldn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we just moved on to the sugar. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know why you didn't hear because I hadn't a chair. That's why. Fuck's sake. It knocked off the sharing when I came back. There it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's good because um, I just want to talk about, I will be shot if I don't ask, is there any chance of this being heard in a live circuit at any stage? No, not really. Like, I mean, it's, you know, I like me and Rory, we kind of talked about it briefly in passing, but like, ultimately, I don't know any other, I don't really know any other guitarists or bass players, really. Do you know what I mean? It's not, a short answer is no okay. for the moment. You know, yeah. I mean, as I was like, I was kind of joking with Rory saying, well, if, if Meshuggah Gojira come knocking, you know, and say, hey, we love your band, <laughs> you, know, us, you know, then we might turn around and, you know, maybe organize something. But uh, for the moment, no. OK, cool. Um, and, and the last track I want to play, uh, like, uh, let's talk about just learning through the distortion. I know you were saying it was the first track you wrote. Yeah. And it's yet it seems to be is probably the most um different track and it points in the direction where you possibly can go with the next one. Does that sound strange? Because it's just... There's, yeah, it's, it's kind of strange because it is literally, say, like, Learning Through Distortion was the la first track I wrote and Blue Fire for Bones was the first... Sorry, was the last track I wrote. Yeah. And Learning Through Distortion was the first track I wrote. And, yeah, you see, it's... Again, it's all subjective. Do you know what I mean? It's because, you know, my experience is... You know, it's really interesting to hear your taking it. Mm. Do you know, because almost, to me, Learning Through Distortion sounds kind of... I've just heard it so many times yeah, that it's course. just it's it's just really it's old hat to me at this stage. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but yeah. you know, it's um again it's just that song to me, the Learn to Distortion, it's it's just about loving loving riffs. It's just about you know, all the different like different bands in that kind of genre, like say, you know, Burnt by the Sun. Mm. You know, there's that I love that band, and you know, there's a lot of kind of a tip of the hat to them. There's a bit of heel hall in there, kind of three quarters way through the song. There's a bit of like the second last riff is just pure Gojira, dude, yeah. dude, yeah. dude yeah, yeah. you know, like I mean, there's there's a bit of the last the last riff to me is a bit like uh, it's a bit of strapping young lad or something, especially what Rory's doing on the drums. There's That's a bit brilliant, of, man, because I wanted to bring that up because I I thought and I don't know is it with true Rory as well. Uh, Strapping young lad appear a few times in this album for me. Really, that's yeah. interesting. And Rory would be a big wow. uh, Devin Townsend uh, fan. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Devin's music. <laughs> Funnily enough, like strapping is probably the thing from him that I I've gotten into the least. Yeah, uh, but I really like parts of it. Obviously, Gene Hogg and the drummer is unbelievable. I love his playing. It's just like the greatest. Yeah. just so good. And he just does it with so much ease. He's just like, whatever, I'm going to do this thing and then I'm going to go have a coffee. But, uh, <laughs> like, uh, I'm a m much bigger fan of the rest of David Townsend's catalogue, uh, which there's many other amazing drummers on. Mm. But I, th I definitely think there's one section in particular that I can think of that reminds me of that kind of thing a little bit. But it's interesting to hear you say that because I hadn't really made that connection. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's just yeah. like subconsciously come through, you know? I could, like uh, you're probably sick to death of hearing them all and like fr with fresh ears, fresh ears would pick up stuff that maybe mm. unconsciously, yeah, no, like, Dave, that you were, you were yeah, bringing it exactly. across. And it just, I, you know, I just, I, I really, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, you know, I always love somebody else's opinion on, mm. on stuff you're doing because it does, you know, it just makes you look at it and, you know, something that's kind of tired and a bit sort of worn out. It just, you know, it does, it kind of refreshes it for you, you know, and I really appreciate that, you know. Yeah. And the publicity trail, um, do you enjoy social media? No, uh, I'm a bit of a, yeah, I, I wouldn't be someone that would be naturally inclined to, like, I've tried my best, you know, to try and give this, you know, because ultimately I knew I had a record I was personally very proud of and I wanted to give it as good a push as possible. Yeah. 
you know what I mean? And it deserves, it really deserved that. Does. Correct. Um, and you know, but na- as just naturally, personally, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be jumping up and down, going, "Hey, listen to my stuff." You know, I'm just that's not just my personality type, mm. really. You know, um, it's a common thing, isn't it, Daniel? With solo yeah. artists in particular. Yeah, it is actually. Now that you say it, um, but uh, it's definitely. It, it's it's good to get on these type of things and like you know I spotted it on was it metal archives and things like that and get it out there because you know people people should be listening to to us. Yeah, I just you know it just like work. yeah, I would I just really appreciate anybody that would take time to listen to it and give it an ear and hopefully get some kind of enjoyment out of it. You know, um, so you know, like I said, as you can hear the work that went into it and the the passion that went into it. So. Yeah. You know, that's that's all I hope for is just for people to kind of as many people as possible to listen to it and, you know, have an opinion on it. It doesn't have to be a good opinion. <laughs> yeah, if you think yeah, it's yeah. shit, that's fair enough, you know. Um, so, yeah. Um, Rory, but, what about you and when you were with Elinkus, um, the whole social media side of it, trying to explore new avenues for people to hear your music? Um, yeah. Can, can you sympathise to some degree with a solo artist trying to do all this on his own and then do the hard Absolutely, work and man. then actually the hard work is putting it out there and pushing yeah, it. Yeah, that's the hardest. For me, that's the hardest thing of all I've yeah. experienced personally, but, you know. It's really difficult. Like, we had five of us in Elencus, uh that took on various different responsibilities at different stages of there's so many jobs and, like, at different times we try to push that harder and and uh, than at other times and yeah. some of us did more than others and uh as it you delegated pretty, out you pretty good it, at publicity from what i remember just from watching you sort of casually <laughs> over the years you know like you were pretty you know you were good at getting your yourselves out there you know but we we tried i think the main thing with that band to try and get ourselves out there was to try to gig as much as we could yeah and i think fundamentally that's the most important thing to do. Yes. But obviously, in the world we live in, you have to promote yourself online. You have to have a presence if you want to play live, especially and um, and grow an audience. But no, definitely not something that I've ever enjoyed doing. Mm. Um, but you know, it's kind of a necessary part of the job. But yeah. at the same time, there's part of the ch- charm of uh, when you're, I guess, when you're a solo artist, you don't have anyone else in the band <laughs> to like uh tell you what they what what they think you should you should do or whatever and it kind of takes the pressure off in a way do you know what i mean and uh, yeah. i would imagine i guess but yeah it no, was, it, it, it yeah. has its advantages and disadvantages you know because like you know i was saying this to somebody recently the the joy of being a solo artist is ultimately you only have yourself to blame <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You can't point the finger at anybody else. You know, you are solely responsible for your own, whatever it is manifests itself, either in the art or in the promotion. And, you know, I think that's, you know, it's it's it's, it's a good thing for, you know, it works. It's worked the best for me so far. Um, yeah, so I, but I, I think, you know, most successful solo artists, I think you actually have to cultivate a personality online. You know, you yeah. have to be very comfortable in front of the camera and, you know, almost and invite people. To talk, into, in, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I'm willing to do that anyway. You know, I don't have any problem there. Thank but like, God. you know, you have to be comfortable letting people into your own life, you know, and actually mm. making, you know, your life sort of present for, for other people, you know, and I don't, you're you know, putting yourself like out it, there. You have to be comfortable. Yeah, to like do say that. for example, yeah. like guys I know, say uh, you know, like say Rabia Massad or Ola England. Do you know? Do yeah. you know either of those guys? Ola, yeah. You know, yeah, they're really good at. You know, he's a perfect example of someone that you know has has made a a big career. Obviously, he has his guitar brand and stuff. You know, but just by inviting people into his life, you know, to yeah. a certain degree, and you know, he's done very well for himself. You know, and I think that's what you have to do. You know, you have two options, really. It's either do the Ola England thing or give up your job and just throw everything you have into, you know, you get two or three guys and throw everything you have into being in a band and just, you know, literally give yourself no no other option but to, you know, pursue it, you know, like 100%. Like in the metal scene these days, um, Dave, 
what's expected out of you as a solo artist is to have merchandise is to to have videos out there of your songs um and to be probably available for the likes of this so we'll say for the first two the options would be did you explore lyrical videos they're always a safe bet anyway yeah to be honest with you richie it's like i've you know between everything else going on in my life i just felt trying to get the music done as like that was as far as okay. i was willing to go at like and i'll be honest with you you know i've i'm still in a learning process here yeah. do you know what i mean i'm still kind of learning about you know all the different sort of aspects of what it is to try and promote yourself what you have to do do you know even you saying those two things now that wouldn't have been something necessarily that i would i would mm. think of or go oh that's a good idea yeah. do you know what i mean like i'm <laughs> You know, it's I'm I'm fairly um I'm a bit basic. Yeah. <laughs> at the well, moment, to be to be fair to you though, it's hard to to make a lyrical video out of an instrumental song, Richie, yeah, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> good point. <laughs> that is a very good <laughs> point. <laughs> I know what he meant. I, I know what he meant. That's brilliant. I love it. But you knew <laughs> what I meant. Anyway. I know what you meant. <laughs> yeah, also, we're, all, we're all on the same page. Oh, well said. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's 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 all it's all a matter of just time and effort and money as well. You know, like I mean, if I want to do t-shirts, it's like I I don't like, you know, how much does it cost to do a run of fifty t-shirts? You know, twenty five t-shirts. You know, yeah, yeah. No, it's is just, anybody going to buy them? Yeah, well, I think I think they would be truthful, and um, especially with the artwork that's involved in it, um, it's it's yeah. it's very appealing. To, to the average cool. punter, I would say. Well, that's that's good to know. Can you, you imagine know. now what some dude walking around Galway with a rope maker t-shirt on? <laughs> it's that cool. would be a day of a day of pride if I ever saw that happen. <laughs> that I'd be Jesus. I don't know. I'd I'd, I'd feel very I'd feel very like I'd, I'd achieve something if if I ever saw that. No, nah, but look, the, the main thing is the music, man, and it's just for yeah. it's for other. Another time for you to explore, man, and you know. I think so. and it is something I am like. I mean, you know, I am. Hopefully, it's you know, this twenty twenty three. I'm hoping to write another record this year. Wow. You know, and like I've already, I, I've, I've, I've already another demo sent on to Rory of another three or four songs, kind of just waiting in the wings there. You know, I'm always working on my guitar technique. I'm working on my chops. Yeah. You know, um, so it's just. The biggest challenge really is to make something that just isn't another carbon, you know, isn't like, I don't want to overly change the sound, but, you know, just try and keep it interesting for myself. And that's, that's what I liked about this record is that it just felt really new and fresh. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I was just, I was just really happy with the whole creative process. And it's just trying to keep that sort of feeling, I think, because, you know, ultimately you're just sat up in a room in front of a computer. You know, so, you know, you're just trying to keep it as interesting to yourself as possible, mm. you know. Yeah. And ultimately, as well, it's about making connections as well with other people in the scene. Um, yeah. You yeah. can understand well, that, great, Rory, you can't know, like, you? Absolutely, yeah. Like, I think for me, one of the takeaways from my experience with uh, Dave's project and everything that I've done in the last couple of years, really, is like, all my experience with Elenkis previous to COVID really was all geared to playing live. And that was the most important thing for us forever. Mm. Um, and that is really, really important to me. And I want to get back into doing that at some stage when the right thing comes around. But uh, it also, this experience made me realize that like, I actually like enjoy the writing and the recording and the creative process as much, if not more, sometimes than playing live. I think sometimes it's a bit of both, you know? Yeah. Um, and just doing the process is the most rewarding part of it. Uh, and that includes playing live and, and doing the work. But uh, sometimes some things I've worked on, whether it's this or anything else, or I have a hard drive full of music that's never re- been released, never will. Like, I just had the best time making it. And that's <laughs> the best... Yeah the best thing about do, about being a musician for me yeah. um and uh, and this game was really rewarding in that way mm. really yeah. really rewarding yeah no i've like to me the happiest time in all of this really is just when you're in the middle 
of of the process and it's not it's not finished and you still have um it's just that kind of unexplored potential and you know you're just like you know i don't know you just feel that you're lucky to be able to do it do you know what i mean like i just feel lucky to be able to try and put something out there that is you know it's kind of just said well this is my little contribution to a, a style of music i love yeah. you know and that's you know it's as simple as that you know i wouldn't do it if i didn't love it yeah and um, we discussed this as well danielle in relation to how handy it is now for a solo artist to get his work out there through Bandcamp and spotify whereas yeah. before 15 years ago you're you're hoping for some demo to get out there through cassettes or something or yeah. or a record label to snap you up which is really nearly impossible back when certainly when we were in our 20s anyway it just it just didn't happen you know yeah it's great to be able to to make your like you've put so much work into to actually make it accessible to people is great like you know it's rather than it as you said you're sitting there waiting for something to happen you don't have to wait for that it's already out there you know people can can get to it and it's kind of up to yourself if you choose to promote it through the social media channels or or gigging or, or things like that but yeah. um the main thing is, is it's getting out to people anyway so people absolutely yeah, yeah. it's never been easier things. to do that than it yeah, is now technology, like i was saying this to rory a couple of days ago just via text i was like saying you know technology being what it you know like just the fact that i recorded all of this in my bedroom like i had it reamped you know in, in tracks mix um as i was saying before and you know just the fact that like i think the I think sonically the record sounds really I'm yeah. really happy with it. I think it sounds really good and it just blows my mind that it was done, you know, like remotely and you know with my PC and with an audio interface. Yeah. You know, I just like I just think that's amazing. <laughs> you know, and it just gives you so much freedom to be able to you know, you're not in a studio paying 300 euros a day. Yeah. Just having to learn like a clutch of songs that are really complex and just hoping to God you're going to get it right on the yeah. day like this, you know, so it's so unstressful. It's only as stressful as you make it yourself. Do you know what I mean? You're just, I could just go up and go, I'm just going to work on a riff or two for an hour or two and, you know, I'll come back to it tomorrow. It's, mm. it's no problem. You know, Dave, what equipment were you using? Guitars and maybe? So, yeah. Guitar, I pretty much just use this, which is a Gibson Les Paul Classic. Okay. I bought this 20 years ago um, in, in um, where, where the fuck, in Walton's in Dublin. It has um, Seymour Duncan uh, P90 rails. Okay. So pretty cool, just really nice medium output pickups. And I use um, evidence audio cables which are really good quality cables I invested they're about 90 euros 100 euros for a cable but you know it's, it's worth it and for my audio interface is uh it's a, a audience id 14. oh ah, okay so you know it's just a really good like i was talking i don't know a huge amount about this stuff aiden cunningham who he actually engineered uh one of Ilenkis's records and he did a EP for me. He just recommended that I get that audit, that interface a couple of years ago. So I just was like, yeah, if it's good enough for Aiden, it's good enough for me. And then when I was asking Michael Richards, I was like, because it was really sort of paranoid that the guitars weren't going to sound as good as possible because I was sort of, you know, doing it remotely in DI. And he was like, look, the the converters on, on the ID14 are great. Okay. So, you know, like that's, that's, and I use, a MacBook and Logic, and it's as simple as that. You know, what it's about pretty. Bass? Um, is Fender Jazz? Of course, nice. Just a classic, just a standard, you know, uh, American kind of. That's like their what you would say baseline. You know, cheap, uh, cheapest American model. Entry that level. They have. <laughs> yeah, entry level. That's the one. And um, yeah, no. Really great bass. Um, I actually, I'd never done it before. I bought it on Toman during lockdown. I would never buy an instrument without having without putting my hand on it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But like, I'd no other option, and I just bought it on Toman, and thankfully it came, and I was I was delighted with it. So 
fantastic bass. Like you can hear that on the second track, Pain, or the third track, like it just sounds th- it that, does. just that. That's, open that ends bass. the track actually, doesn't it? The it, bass it, ends, it starts, yeah. it opens the track and ends, ends it, up, and it yeah. just sounds killer. I love yeah. it. Like it's a really great sounding bass. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all the gear, you know. Class. Okay, we'll fi- finish up with one more song then, which I was supposed to play. Uh, Learning through distortion. I have a clip of it here. That is my favorite track of the album and Rory talk to me about this uh, this one was like super fun to do really yeah. really really self-explanatory really the riffs uh, that kind of triplet feel as soon as I heard that I knew what knew what to do straight away okay um, and like some tracks you get given and like you have to think a bit more about what to do but with this one like I just got flooded with ideas straight away okay. uh, like I thought of a bunch of different things in different sections to try in different ways and i think um i think i'm not sure if it was this track but there were certainly parts on some of the songs where i'd send different versions of sections to dave and let him choose which one he liked Mm -hmm. more um but this one was very much like ironically like you were saying earlier you felt like it was the it could be the gateway to what could come next yes it was the gateway to what did come next which was the rest of the record <laughs> yeah. but in a way yeah. i actually was surprised after doing this one that uh the other songs weren't a bit more kind of uh uh metally in a way mm-hmm. uh, like there's a bit more double kick stuff in this and i, I know trashy dave is trashy if you yeah, know or, I, yeah. I guess so I know, Dave, you did write some other parts which have some of that in as well, but they've just got a different kind of feel and a different push and uh, groove to them. This one's got a bit more of an old schooly metally y vibe. Um, totally, yeah. And I, I think that when, after I did this track, maybe I wrongly had some like potential expectations, like, oh, maybe we'll do more of this kind of thing. But then Dave went in this other direction, which was really fun, but definitely one of the funnest ones. I think there was a period in time after we did all, did nearly all the other tracks that you weren't even sure if you were going to end up putting that song on the record. Yeah. I really? Really, you hummed and hawed about yeah. it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That, yeah. That's, yeah, there you yeah. go. That is actually that, very, I forgot about that as well. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, I was, I was nearly not going to put it on because it was in a, like, again, you just get very sort of, OCD or something. I was like, oh, it's in a different tune and it doesn't necessarily fit in with the other stuff and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, yeah. Because another uh, a friend of mine, Shane, um, he used to play in Refraction as well. It's his. It's one of his... He reckoned it should have been one of the singles, you know. Um, I mean, maybe he was, he was right. But, um, you know... Um, he, he he it was his favorite song as well you know because i shared the album with one or two of my friends before i released it and you know he was like oh that's a that was one of the tracks that stood out to him as well yeah. i don't know for it, me it, it doesn't it's, matter it's a great closer to, to close yeah. the album jesus yeah. like i i can't think of a better one to close the album with yeah how, how, the biggest irony of it is, is the the it's oldest track and I, I, presume, I presume daniel you've you've probably a different favorite on the album um, the Great Submerged, I think, was yeah. um, one that stood out to me. But this one stood out to me as well. Um, definitely got that kind of, I kind of felt like Gajiri kind of vibe. Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. like, I mean, 
Gojira are very much, uh, you know, inspiration mm. <laughs> for that track. Yeah. You know, the strapping vibes like, are in that song. Yeah, I think yeah. on the drums in one section. Yeah, when and we the opening, there, the like, opening oh. as well, Rory. Just a, a, gr- a great idea, just to leave the drums open, and you'd, you'd yeah. almost expect the heaviness to follow, and it and it did, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that was Dave's. I, was it your idea? I think you were just like, you so. just do I think a so fill. because you're always yeah. you're always like you know with instrumental stuff, you know, music in general. You're always like, how do I, you know, you can't just keep coming in with like you know, boom, start off drums, mm. bass, guitar. You're always trying to find ways to sort of introduce a song and you know inevitably it kind of falls into cliche you know like let's open mm. with a bass track let's open with distortion let's open <laughs> yeah, with the yeah. uh, you know what i mean it's mm. it's very hard to try and come up with sort of interesting non-cliche ways to sort of you know but then again cliches are only cliches if it's if what you're doing shit you know what <laughs> there's I mean? another so, song there's another song on the record with the drum intro so maybe that will become the cliche yeah, no, but the one, like, what I'm saying is that the all, you know, like all the drum intros are really cool. So, like, it doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a, yeah. if it's, you know, again, it was my idea for it to be a cliche. So, <laughs> <laughs> lean into the cliches. Lean into the cliches. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, like it's a fantastic. Uh, I love the drum intro to that. It's just, it's just technical and tribal, and like as Richie was saying, you're just, you just know something fucking heavy's coming yeah. after it. Like, you know, yeah, absolutely really great. Some tracks, uh, from a drumming point of view, just like tell you what to play, uh, yeah. and that one, like certainly for a lot of it, it was just it was just obvious, you know? mm. yeah, yeah, and instinctual, I guess. So, interwoven is out at the moment. It's on Bandcamp. So, everybody who's listening to this or watching this, please head over to Dave's Bandcamp Rope Maker. The, tr- the album is interwoven. It, it, you've, you've, you've heard three clips of three amazing songs. It's jam-packed with riffs, fantastic drumming and musicianship, which I have to say is is incredible. And you're, you're a credit to the scene, Dave. And, thank, and thankfully thank you've, you. landed, thank you, Richie. you've landed at the right time where I think, Daniel, there's a resurgence in Irish metal at the moment. And we've never been yeah. so spoiled for great musicians, yeah. great bands Can at I- the moment. So. Can I just say through this whole promotion thing, um, I've just, I've really come, you know, I've really come into contact with like the amount of talent in this country and what people are doing is, you know, it's it's amazing. And it's really been, like I said previous, it's been such a learning experience in so many ways. And one of the great things I'm taking away from this is just finding out about so many great new Irish bands. Mm. Do you know it's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm just really, I'm really happy. I've kind of, I've broadened my horizons yeah. a bit with what's going on in 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 this in this country with the scene. You know, so. And you've brought Rory back into our radar yeah, as well. well. The man deserves to be heard, yes. and a lot more. Yeah. So Rory and Dave, thanks a million for taking the time to come on the show. Apologies about the tech issues. Uh, Daniel, as always, thanks a million as well. No worries. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks, lads. Really Good appreciate crack. that. Yeah, and crucially, everybody, support your local medicine. Absolutely.